All right, today's how-to is all about hard drives. I'm going to teach you how to upgrade them and how to install them. Now, this is definitely a beginner level uh, how-to. So if you're new to using components and building your own PCs and upgrading your own internals, this is right up your alley. This is a very basic how-to, how to get the right type of hard drive, how to upgrade it, and how to actually get it inside uh, your machine, how to simplify things and make it easier to see. I actually have a motherboard on the outside over here. I have a SATA cable, uh, and I have a case here. So I'm going to show you how to A, get it in the case, B, how to hook up the SATA cable, and then also how to hook up the power from your power supply. We're also going to talk a little bit about the connections, and we're going to start off with talking about that because that is the most important part. you got to make sure uh, that you get the correct hard drive for your computer. Now, if you have a modern computer, it's going to be SATA. SATA is serial ATA. It's the most common, uh, commonly used connection right now. It's actually called an interface, uh, and basically it's the most popular one right now. Now, a lot of older computers, though, have the IDE, uh, or that big fat ribbon cable. I'm sure you've seen it before, uh, and that is a different. That's a PADA, uh, or parallel versus a serial. Now, this is what uh, a PADA, or IDE, looks like. As you can see, it has a ton of small little pins, uh, and basically it's going to use a really, really big ribbon cable to attach to your drive. Now, uh, a serial ATA or SATA uh, right here is a completely different animal. It's basically got uh, the plug for the hard drive and then the power plug right here. Now, I want you guys to notice that this is the power for the SATA. Now, look at the Sa uh, the power for this. It's the older uh, Molex connection, the four pin Molex. So that's basically the two things you need to notice. This uses a big four pin Molex and an IDE ribbon cable uh, versus the SATA, uh, which uses both SATA power connectors. So it's a SATA cable to go to your motherboard and then the power from the power supply. Now let's talk a little bit about these drives on my desk here. Let's talk a little bit about uh, speed and capacity. Now, first of all, uh, what you're looking at here is an IDE, an old drive. It's IDE. This is basically what you're going to be taking out of your computer to replace. This is an old 500 gig. Uh, it's still pretty good capacity. 500 gigs is enough for a lot of uh, movies, but and, and music and folders and files and pictures, but uh, you might want to upgrade to the faster and newer inter, uh, you know, interface type, which is the SATA right over here. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about capacities and what type of people need large capacities. Uh, one terabyte right here is a pretty big capacity nowadays. Uh, that's a good amount. It's the second or third largest drive on the market. One terabyte is good enough for the majority of people, and just having one one terabyte drive is enough to store all your stuff, run your operating system, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, now, if you're an enthusiast and you want extreme performance, you might want to look into one of these. Uh, this is an SSD. Basically, it's like a hard drive, except that it has all flash memory in here, uh, multi-layer NAND flash. And these give you blistering performance. These are very, very fast. There's no moving parts. Uh, they're shockproof. They're weatherproof. They're just uh, really, really durable. They're, so it makes them really good for laptops, and it speeds up your computer significantly. Uh, now, somewhere in between there uh, is something like this. This is a Velociraptor from Western Digital. This is a 2.5-inch drive. It's actually just the inside. So it's a hard. It's a, a laptop hard drive, just like this one, 2.5. Uh, but it's fit in this. Uh, case so that it fits in the 3.5 inch form factor that most desktop computers actually accept. Uh, now, if you don't have a place to put a 2.5 inch drive into a desktop, again, you can kind of just figure out a way to stick it in your case, but uh, on a drive like this, it comes with this very nice little adapter so that you know it's going to screw in uh, just perfectly. The fit will be just right, and you won't have any uh, loose parts in here. This is 400 gigabytes. This is a good compromise between speed and performance. The one terabyte might do 105 megabit per second read. Uh, this is going to do like 125. This is going to do about 240, which is very, very fast. Uh, and that's all good and useful. Now let's talk a little bit about RAID uh, because there are a few different types of um, RAID out there. Now, if you're going to do something and you're all about performance, you want blistering fast speed, RAID 0 is definitely going to be what you want to do. That basically splits uh, the outputs coming out of the motherboard into two hard drives so they can both write as fast as possible, and you're splitting it up. The problem is, is that now if one drive fails, all the information is lost, so it's not as reliable. Um, but you do get an increase in performance. RAID 1 on the opposite end of that is basically going to be a redundant backup. It's going to write the same thing to two different drives. So if one drive were to fail, you always have a backup. Now, there's a lot of other types of RAID, and you get a lot more complicated with it, but 
just to keep it simple, since this is a beginner's tutorial, uh, basically RAID 0 is going to give you added performance but decrease reliability. RAID 1 is going to increase your reliability, but it's going to keep your performance about the same. The other benefit uh, to RAID 1, or I'm sorry, it's not a benefit, it's a disadvantage, is that you're actually um, paying twice for the same amount of space. You're buying two. Uh, one terabyte hard drives, we only have one terabyte of space to store it in. So that's a very basic RAID setup. Uh, so let's move on from RAID. I don't want. I just wanted to touch on RAID um, in case it was important to somebody out there. But RAID is is something that's a little more advanced. This is beginners. I just want to teach you how to get this uh, into your computer. Now let's take a look at the inside of this case. I'm going to show you here. Uh, there's this is a. Uh, NZXT Panzer case. Now there's a couple different places to put hard drives in here, uh, but I'm going to show you this one right here. This is a great place to put it. This is what most cases look like. It's basically like a little caddy uh, that will hold your drive. Now most of these drives, um, you'll notice they do have uh, these little screws on the side, and basically that's how you secure your drive. So basically, um, as far as installing the drive, it's very simple. Usually, in 99.9% .9 of the cases, uh, you're going to slide it in, and you're going to see those holes are going to line up right there and right there. And as you can imagine, all you got to do is basically thread in a screw or two. Uh, some people just use one because they'd rather it be fast. And tighten it down with a screwdriver. And you basically, you're now secure. Now, some people want to do all four screws. Uh, I prefer just to do one or two on one side, maybe, to keep it secure. Um, but very simple. You don't need to get too complicated or lock it in. Um, and that's basically it as far as physically uh, getting it into the case. Now, actually hooking up the drive uh, is just as easy, actually. Now, I'm going to show you. Uh, there's two things you need to plug in to the hard drive. First is the SATA cable, which is going to go to the motherboard. The second is the power, the SATA power, which is going to power uh, the drive itself. Now, I'm going to work with uh, this one terabyte drive. I'm going to put the rest of them to the side. Uh, and I'm going to show you basically, whoa, I'm going to show you basically, first of all, how to hook up the SATA power. Now, the SATA power uh, basically comes from your power supply. So I happen to have a power supply in my lap. It happens all the time. Uh, and if you zoom in here, I want to show you what the SATA plug looks like. This is basically what a SATA plug looks like. Uh, so where you might have seen the older uh, Molex plugs, if you're getting a new hard drive, this is what it's going to look like. Um, and as you can see on uh, this hard drive, there's this big fat one over here. Uh, there is a tab that faces down and a tab that faces up. You're basically just going to plug it in, and now you are secured. That is basically uh, plugged in. Now the other end, this cable is going to be coming out of your power supply inside of your PC that's already there. So basically I have this cable already separated uh, to make it a little simpler, but you're going to find the SATA cable inside your loop, inside your harness, and you're going to plug it in here. The other cable that you're going to need to plug in uh, is your SATA cable, and this is basically what a SATA cable looks like. Most of them are red or black. They usually come with the motherboard, and you're going to do the same thing. You're just going to uh, plug it in right there and there you go now you are plugged in uh, now it is kind of important where the other end goes though because <laughs> you can't just plug it into the hard drive uh, basically you're going to be plugging it into the SATA header on your motherboard now in case you've never seen a SATA header this is what a SATA header looks like um, a lot of motherboards have you know as many as six of them eight even more and it doesn't really matter which one you plug it into but uh, you do want to make sure you plug it in securely firmly and once it's in uh, SATA is kind of like a hot, hot swappable plug and play device. So once you plug it in, your computer automatically is going to know uh, that it's there. And that's basically all you have to do. Now, if you had one drive already you know, installed over here and it had your operating system on it, and now you're adding a second drive to just make it to get more space or more capacity, all you really need to do is plug this in, restart the computer, uh, go into Windows, and you're going to have to format that drive. So that's basically it. All you do is plug in the SATA cable, plug in the power from your power supply uh, to the drive, and then physically install it, put a couple screws in, and that's basically the extent of how easy it is to add a hard drive to your device. Now, if you want to upgrade uh, your only drive, because let's say your drive died, then you have a couple options. You might actually have to image your drive and then mount it to the new drive if you want to keep all your settings and keep your Windows profile. If the drive failed completely, well, then you're not going to be able to recover your data. You're going to have to install the drive and then basically reinstall Windows on it. Uh, or again, like I said, if it's a second drive and you're just upgrading, you're basically just going to plug it in, format it, and it's going to uh, be a second drive letter, D drive, and you have a whole bunch of new storage. Uh, now, one more thing before I let you go. I want to talk uh, a little bit uh, about this device. Now, take a look at this. What you're looking at there is basically a 2.5 inch to 3.5 inch uh, adapter. But not only that, it actually allows you to put two 2.5 inch drives in here and then install the entire thing uh, into a 3.5 inch drive bay. Now, when SSDs first started coming out, 
Uh, I obviously, you know, grabbed a few and I wanted to try them out. It was really hard to find a place to mount uh, an SSD inside of your computer. Desktops are not meant to handle 2.5 inch drives. Uh, look at this. This is so simple. You basically uh, just stick it on there, close this up, and it'll basically lock over here and you're set. Now it's exactly the same dimensions as a 3.5 inch drive. Uh, you put it into your PC. It actually only uses one power instead of two. And it doesn't really matter if you only want to use one drive in there or if you want to use two. It's just a great, cheap, affordable way uh, and good looking way, I might add, to get uh, your SSDs into your computer if they don't have a place to mount them because most things usually don't. Uh, your other option is on the 2.5 inch drives, the holes are still in the same place. So you kind of just screw it in nice and tight to one side only and it's kind of kind of float in the air. I don't like that method. I prefer this, but this is uh, a little bit of money. I don't, these aren't too expensive, but they do cost. So uh, just wanted to throw that in there. And that wraps up our how-to. That's all you got to know. SATA cable, SATA power, what type of hard drive to buy. Uh, you know, you want to get a big drive, add it as a secondary drive. Putting it in is as simple as using a screwdriver. You don't need any tools. Uh, so don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. It's really, really easy to install or upgrade your hard drive. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and email me, and I will see you guys next time.